So in this video, I'll be analyzing the common gate amplifier. Except this time, I'm going to be adding back in the output resistance. And this is going to turn out to make things considerably more challenging. So remember, we said the common gate amplifier, it's just this amplifier, um, where the gate is grounded or common, uh, the output is taken at the drain, and the input, weirdly enough, is applied to the source. Well, okay. That's all fine and dandy. Uh, if we draw out the small signal model for this circuit, we just start with the MOSFETs hybrid pi model, uh, GM VGS, where this is the source, this is the gate, so this is VGS. And this time we're also going to include the output resistance RO and RD. And so remember, so this is the drain of the MOSFET. Um, so this is the drain of the MOSFET and the drain is connected to RD and that's connected to VDD which we then write as ground because all constant voltage are all constant voltages are ground in our small signal model and then at the source at the source we're applying this input voltage VN and the gate is grounded and so we want to find the three central quantities of interest, the voltage gain, the input resistance, and the output resistance. And we want to know what these are. So I'm going to actually start this time with the output resistance because I've done this calculation before and I know it's considerably easier than the other ones. So if we just, uh, we know that Vn has to become zero, so it has to become a short to ground when, he, when, he, when we calculate our output resistance. And we know that we're applying a test voltage. So this is the output. We know that we're applying a test voltage at the output and measuring the test current, I test. Okay, um, let's just redraw this real quick. Since both RO and this current source are connected to ground, I'm just gonna move this ground symbol, uh, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw this ground symbol at each, at each location, just to make it absolutely clear that these uh, these elements are connected to ground. So what is the current flowing out of this voltage source? Well, uh, we just apply KCL at this node. It's the current flowing out of into this resistor plus the current flowing into this resistor plus the current flowing into this current source. So the current flowing into a resistor is just the voltage, which is V test, uh, divided by the resistance value. So plus V test over RO and then plus GM VGS. But as before, we know that VGS is just zero. So this term will actually cancel out. So if we regroup everything, uh, I test is just equal to V test times one over RD plus one over RO <clears throat> over V test over I test is equal to one over 1 over RD plus 1 over RO. But this is just the parallel combination of RD and RO. So that's nice. The output resistance is this simple, simple equation. It's just RD in parallel with RO. So it doesn't change much. Um, that This is relatively unchanged, especially when RO is much greater than RD. This expression is still approximately just RD. Okay, now what about the input resistance? Let's, let's try and calculate the input resistance. So let's redraw our small signal model. GM, VGS. Now we've also got to deal with RO. We've still got RD hanging off here, doing its thing. We've got our gate, our source, and our drain. And this is also the output voltage. But here that's not relevant because we're just going to be applying a test voltage at the input, V test, and measuring the current flowing out of it, I test. And this gate, because this is a common gate amplifier, is grounded. Well, okay, this doesn't look too bad. Um, and indeed, it's not, it's not terrible. 
certainly uglier than the last couple circuits because we've got two we've got two equations that we're going to have to deal with but let's let's just start so let's first apply kcl at this node we know that the current flowing in must equal the current flowing out so i test must equal the current flowing into this current source which is minus gm vgs we know it's current it's a, the current of the current source um plus uh, the current flowing into this resistor, which is just the voltage drop across it. So V test minus V out over RO. And unfortunately, that's all we can say about this node because we don't know what V out was. So if V out were zero, for example, then this would be much easier. Um, and we wouldn't, have to, we wouldn't have to worry about doing any additional calculations. But I mean, it's not horrible. Um, so then let's apply KCL at this second node. Well, uh, I don't really like KCLs at these sorts of nodes because it's difficult to figure out well, what currents should be flowing out and what currents should be flowing in. So you kind of just have to assume that all currents are flowing out, for example, or there's a, and then set them equal to zero. That's the standard way of doing KCL, but it's less intuitive for me, and it's it's I I always just find it kind of awkward. Um, so. The current flowing, first the current flowing into this resistor RD is just V out over RD. Uh, the current flowing into this resistor RO is the voltage drop across RO. So in this case, it's V out minus V test over RO. And then the current flowing out of this node into the current source is just the current of the current source. So we don't even have to flip the sign. That's, that's nice. Uh, so plus GM VGS is equal to zero. And so we've got our two KCL equations. So all we need to do now is reduce these into a form that we want. So we want to reduce these into something that says V test over I test equals what? Equals, uh, what, what is it? What is it equal? It's, it's a number or it's a set of these variables, but uh, we want to know what, what it equals. Uh, and first thing, we need to get rid of this VGS because we can't have this VGS sitting in these equations. VGS is not part of the answer that we want. Um, so that's the first thing we'll do. So VGS is, as usual, uh, VG minus VS. And here VG is zero volts because uh, the gate is grounded. And VS is just equal to V test. So zero minus V test or negative V test. And so we can substitute that into each of each of these equations. And I'm just going to do that by erasing things and writing them back in. So here, uh, if we replace VGS with minus V test, this term becomes positive GM V test. So GM V test. And if we replace VGS in our other equation, this becomes minus GM V test. because in both cases we're, we're flipping the sign. Now what we need to do is eliminate our remaining variable. So we need to eliminate V out. Okay, uh, the way that I usually like to do this is just factoring everything. So V out, uh, one over RD plus one over RO. Uh, and then we've also got a V test term, so minus V test because both of these terms are negative, so this is gonna be easier. Uh, one over RO plus GM. And rearranging this, we can see that V out is equal to V test times one over RO plus GM over one over RD plus one over RO. Now, after going through the rest of the fairly nasty algebra, um, ultimately you'll get this result. Uh, v test over I test is equal to RD plus RO over one plus GMRO. And this is the input resistance. Now that's interesting um, because previously we just said that the, our, our old input resistance was just one over GM. And this looks nothing like that. Uh, so under what conditions is is this the same as our old answer? 
well, we'd expect it to be when RO is very large, so we, when we can ignore RO. And if we take the limit of this expression as RO approaches infinity, then we can neglect this RD term on the top because on the top it's just approximately RO, and we can neglect this one term, so it's just RO over GM RO, which is indeed one over GM. So this is the exact expression for input resistance of a common gate amplifier. Um, at DC at least. Now you'll notice something interesting about the previous analysis. One of the equations we came up with is only a function of V-test in terms of V-out. And we're applying V-test and V-in to the same exact place. So if we just change the name of this V-test and call it V-in, um, this expression here actually just gives us the voltage gain. So we got the voltage gain for free during calculating the output resistance. Um, that's kind of cool. So if we rewrite it, it's just V out is equal to V in, one over RO plus GM divided by one over RD plus one over RO. And this is kind of ugly, so I want to multiply everything by RO over RO. And so we get V in times one plus GM RO divided by one plus RO over RD. And if we divide both sides by V in, we get the voltage gain. Now this is interesting. Uh, how does this compare to the previous answer we got? Because it looks pretty different, right? Our previous answer was GM RD when we neglected RO. So we would expect to get the same answer when we take RO becomes infinity because that's just the same thing as neglecting RO. So if RO is infinity, then we can neglect this one and we can neglect this one uh, because RO over RD is going to be much greater than one and GMRO is going to be much greater than one. And we get GMRO divided by RO over RD or the ROs cancel and we get the answer GMRD. So this is the more general expression for the for the gain uh, let me just erase those those crosses so that we we can have the expression in all its glory uh, so this is the more ex more uh, precise expression when we do want to take into account ro but we see that when ro is very large it reduces to our previous expression and so this is the complete model for the common gate amplifier we have the voltage gain the output resistance and the input resistance. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. If you like the video, please consider liking it or subscribing to my channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks.